all our online audience on YouTube, on Facebook, on Zoom, on our platforms. We welcome you this morning and we pray that you will continually be blessed in the name of Jesus. That time of praise and worship was beautiful, was awesome. I hope you get to praise the Lord in your various homes, even with our praise team every Sunday. Just dance and um, the presence of God is already there in your house. Enjoy that presence to the, to the max. And the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Alright, this afternoon I have a short message. I believe, I hope, and I pray uh, for fathers this morning. Hallelujah. I've got an encouraging word from God for all the fathers this morning. Like I said earlier on, you're doing a great job. Keep doing what you're doing. But I want you to know who you are. You are a father. That's who you are. And um, the first person that came as our father was God Almighty himself. You know, he is regarded as the father of all fathers. He is the father that gave birth to every one of us. And Ed also called us to be fathers. And so the attributes of God have been deposited in all of us as fathers. And so this morning in particular, I want to speak even to all the fathers. So you know who you are. And you begin to manifest who God has called you to be. I'm going to tell you a few things about yourself this morning. And I start with Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so, Father, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand as we proceed in your word. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you go ahead of us. Reveal yourself to us, O oh God, today. Let the name of Jesus be glorified. Let every one of us be blessed. Father, let there be encouragement. Let there be lifting. Let there be a drawing closer unto you, O oh God, even today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, so you see, from that Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, I want to tell you this morning, every father out there, let no one tell you otherwise. The fact of the matter is you are made in the image of the Most High God. You are created in the image of God. Don't let anybody tell you, judge you by your looks. Don't let anybody judge you by your attributes. Listen, know within yourself that you are made in the likeness of God. Every time you look into that mirror, I want you to see God and I want you to see yourself. Because that's who you are. The Bible says here clearly, and God said, let us make man in our image. That means you are a replica of God. You are, you are the express image of God. Whatever you look like, you are an express image of God. So don't let anybody tell you, you are second rated, you are third rated, you are whatever. Listen to me, you are a first class image of God. What you see in that mirror is exactly what God looks like. Hallelujah. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You are made in the image and in the likeness of God. So that's the first thing I need you to do as a father this morning. Look at yourself and tell yourself, I don't care what the world sees. All I know is I am made in the image of the Most High God. And that's all that matters. Hallelujah. And even in that scripture it says, And God said, let them have dominion. Secondly, you are created to dominate. You are created to have dominion. You are created to live above and not beneath. You are created to be on top at all times. That's who you are. The, the, there, is, there is something that is locked up within you that you need to unlock. And that's the ability to be a leader. You are a leader. God made you a leader. God made you to be, to dominate, to be on top, to have dominion. That's who you are. And that's, you know, this morning I'm going to be speaking expressly from the word of God. Not from logic, not from common sense, but everything I'm going to say, I'm going to draw out of the scriptures this morning so you can see that God has already spoken about you. You are a father, you are made in his image, and he gave you that authority to have dominion. To have dominion means to have government over, to rule over, to be on top of. That's what God has designed about you. He says you have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. That means the earth has to respond to your being. You need to walk with authority on the face of the earth and tell the earth, earth, oh earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. 
have been, it has been said about me that I have dominion over you. Therefore, succumb to me. Lay down for me. You don't know, walk on top. Be majestic in what you do. Because that's who you are. And then number, number three, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, 7, uh, verse 7, verse 15, verse 18, and 24. That's four verses. Verse 7, verse 15, verse 18, and verse 24. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And then in verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And verse 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and he shall be one flesh. Let me start by saying number three here. Listen to me. You are created to be a hard worker. You are not created to be a lazy person. I'm speaking to the man out there this morning. You are not created to be a couch player. You are not created to lay on the couch while others walk. You are created to walk. That's who God has made you. The Bible said God created a garden and he took man and he put him into that garden to dress and to keep it. You are not created to, to, to rely on somebody else. You are created to provide for people. Do you understand me? You are created to be a provider. Every man out there, you are a provider. You are a hard worker. God has given you the skill, the grace, everything you need even to make ends meet. Tap into it. Get up from that sofa and get something done. Quit laying down. You're not lazy. God didn't create you a lazy person. God didn't create you to live on excuses. God created you to put excuses down and advance in life. That's who you are. You are a hard worker. The genes to work hard is already in you. What it takes to work hard is already in you. And listen to me, as you work, as you work hard, no matter what you do, God will bless the works of your hands. God will increase you mightily. But listen to me, God will only bless what you do. God will not bless laziness. God will not bless you sitting down on that couch doing nothing. So get up as a man and find something to do and do it. Because that's who God created you to be. You are a hard worker. You are not a lazy person. And also listen to me, God knew that you were going to need help. And that's why it was God's idea to bring you a helper. It was God's idea, not your idea. The Bible said God saw that man was alone and man needed help. And God said, let us give him an helper. So it was God's idea to bring you your need. For every father out there that is married, your Eve is your helper. Your wife is your Eve, and your wife is your helper. Your wife is not the one to do the work. You are the one to do the work while she helps you. Occasionally, the helper may do more. But it is not supposed to be confused that the helper does the most at all times. So as a father out there, it is your duty to be the provider. But when things fall short, then you have your great helper by your side. Hallelujah. Your wife is your helper. So God knew that along the way, you may not be able to carry the load all by yourself. And that's why God gave you that helper, that wonderful woman, that beautiful wife, that great woman, that own builder, to be there by your side. Not behind you, but by your side. She's your helper. She's not your maid. You didn't marry her to make to have a baby, you married her to be your helper, to be your equal. That's who you married. Hallelujah. So it was God's idea. God created you as a man to work hard, and in the process of your working hard, God knew you were going to need help. And God said, Okay, let me create a woman to help you alongside. So number three, like I said, you were made to you were made to work hard. God didn't create a lazy man. If you are a thinker, think hard. If you are a worker, work hard. Whatever you find, the Bible says, whatever you find your hand to do, do it diligently. And it says, God says, I will prosper the works of your hands. What is your hands doing? What are your hands doing? If your hands is doing nothing, there can be no prosperity coming your way. 
It is only what you lay your hands upon that God is going to prosper. So if you sleep on the couch, guess what? The prosperity you're going to receive is to sleep more. So get up from that couch and do something. And the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, let he, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Can I say this to you? Listen carefully. Every man out there, you are giving the wisdom to grow in God. This was a people. At a point in time, they, de they decided amongst themselves, they said, okay, God is too far away. We need to create a step, a staircase between heaven and earth so that we can walk into heaven anytime we want. And they began to think, how are we going to do this? And the wisdom came, the knowledge came, the intellect came. And they were able to do that. And they built that tower. They built it up unto God. And that was in the tower of Babylon. And they built it and God said, listen, I'm going to, I have to confound their language so they don't keep coming up here. And so God stopped that. And in the Garden of Eden also, after man had acquired wisdom, Man, God said, look, this man now knows like we know. Lest he will take the tree of life and eat and forever leave. God said, let's shut him out of that place. That means man has the ability to develop in wisdom. The wisdom of yesterday will not sustain you today. The wisdom of today will not sustain you tomorrow. Every day you are expected to grow in more wisdom. You are expected to grow in grace. You are expected to draw closer out to God. That you are expected to receive a fresh revelation on a daily basis. That's why some of, some of us, when we run with the revelation of yesterday, miracles don't take place. Things don't happen for us because guess what? The cloud of glory has already shifted. And when that cloud shifts and you are still in yesterday's cloud, you cannot experience the fullness of God. So every man out there, listen to me, you are filled with the knowledge of God to grow deeper in God and to excel in God. Number five, in the book of Job chapter 32 verse 8, the Bible says, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Hallelujah. You know what? That's why you can sit and you can imagine great things. You, there, there is inspiration from the Almighty God for you. You can sit and imagine great things. You know, the other day I was reading about Solomon and when God spoke to him, and when God told when he asked God, he said, okay, um, I don't want riches, I don't want wealth, but I want the ability to be able to uh, take care of these your great people. And God said, because you did not ask for riches and wealth, but you asked for wisdom, even to take care of these great people, God said, I will give you more. Somebody help me attend to that soon. He said, I'll give you more. And so, and I began to read, I continued reading, and I realized that that encounter with God by Solomon was through dream. It was by a dream. It wasn't as if Solomon actually saw God and God appeared and said, Solomon. No, Solomon had a dream, and in his dream, he had an encounter with God. So God spoke to him in a dream. Many of us, we have had encounters with God in our dreams, but we have discarded them. We did not take them as real. Listen, and God came unto you in that dream, speaking to you, filling you with wisdom, with knowledge, with revelation, with insight, with understanding, with direction, with instruction. But we refused to acknowledge what God was saying because we thought it was just a dream. The greatest men that have lived in the scriptures, God has spoken to them through dreams. I'm speaking to some man out there this morning. Those dreams you are having is not an accident. They are not by accident. It is God reaching down unto you and speaking to you expressly. Do you understand me? God is giving you instructions. And the instructions in those dreams, they are the instructions that will take you from where you are to where God is taking you to. So, and that's why the Bible says there in the book of Job, says there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty given him understanding. 
you have the understanding of the most high in Jesus' name. Number five, five or six, Psalm 1 verse 1, I love this so much. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of his comfort. Hello, listen to me, man. Stay away from him. Stay away from evil men. Stay away from men who draw you unto evil. Men who lure you into adultery. Men who lure you away from your family. They are not your friends. They are your enemies. Get it clear right now. Friends who take you away from your homes. Friends who take you away from your family. Friends who encourage you to stay away from your family or to have affairs. They are not good friends. They are your enemies. That's what the those are. This is exactly what the Bible is saying here in the book of Psalm 1, verse 1. You are only blessed when you walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Such men are ungodly men. Men who tell you not to provide for your family. Men who tell you not to take care of your homes. Men who tell you just to sleep and do nothing. They are your enemies. They are not your friends. But men who tell you to get up from your butt and go get something to do. Men who tell you to take good care of your family. Listen to me. Those are your friends. Those are the company that God commands you to keep. And that's why it says blessed. You are only blessed if you walk in the right counsel. Can we rephrase that scripture this morning? If it says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Then we can say it this way. Cursed is the man that walks in the counsel of the ungodly. We can always rephrase the scripture in line of exactly what the scripture is saying. So that's why if you find yourself constantly leaning under a curse, the first thing I want you to do is go and look at Psalm 1 verse 4. Am I walking with the ungodly? Am I sitting with sinners? Am I, am I moving with these comfortable people? If you fulfill all these criteria, guess what? A curse will almost follow your life. So as a man, watch those that you associate with. Associate with people that will encourage you to do the right thing. People that will speak the right word into your life. People that will encourage you to do what is right. Associate with them. You may not always agree with them, but listen to me, associate with them. Disagree to agree, but make them your friends. Men who speak wisdom into your life, make them your friends. Number seven. Psalm, Psalm 8, verses 4 to 6, the book of Psalms, verse 8, 4 to 6. Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Listen to verse 6. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. I tell you something, man. God has lifted you up already. Walk in that lift. The Bible says God visited you and He lifted you up and He put all things under your feet. Walk in the authority of Jesus in your life. Sin is under your feet. Defeat is under your feet. Sicknesses and diseases are under your feet. Wickedness is under your feet because God has already lifted you up. That's why the word of God says that God saying, now what is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, no matter who you are, however you are, God is mindful of you. And that's why he said, every hair on your head is numbered. Every time you go to the barbers and you shave your head, God knows exactly how, may, how much you have removed from them. That's why the Bible also says you are inscribed in the palms of his hands. And that's why the scripture also says you are the apple of his eye. God knows you more than you know yourself. He knows your phone number. He knows your bed. He, he knows where you sleep. He knows everything about you that you yourself don't even know. Hallelujah. And God said, I've already deposited what is needed to make you to be on top of you. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. Be encouraged. Let nobody look down on you. Let nobody tell you you are a nobody. Listen to me this morning. You are somebody. You are created in the image of God. You are made in the likeness of the Most High God. You have been empowered. You have been filled with what it takes to succeed. Hallelujah. Number seven. 
Proverbs 7, number 8, have lost count. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attend unto wise counsel. Are you listening to me this morning? Hello, Mr. Man, you don't know it all. Hello, did you hear me? You don't know it all. The Bible says, for the, uh, a wise man will hear and increase learning. Hello, learn from others. Listen to others. You don't know it all. You are not the only one with the, with the, with the entire wealth of knowledge. What you have is an idea. And it is when you rub ideas with others that you begin to understand how that idea in your head can manifest. So learn from others. Don't you ever think you know it all? So the man that is that man that is filled with so much wisdom that you have now become so puffed up, I need to tell you this morning you are headed to destruction. And the way out of that destruction is to humble yourself and learn from others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like I said, I'm just talking to the men this morning. I'm just talking to the men, but um, every other person you can glean from what I'm saying this morning. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. Hello, God has got to help you. There is no way you're going to go that God has not already been. There is absolutely nothing you're going to do that God has not already seen through. It says, God pondereth all his goings. God has already gone. He's the one that created the way, He's the one that is edging you in that direction. Is the one that is moving you along that place. Let me tell, let me say this to somebody this morning. The fact that nobody has done it before and you are having that inclination to do it, it is God that is leading you that way. Because it says the thoughts that I have towards you, they are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to bring you, I'm talking to you this morning, to an expected end. So at the end of that route that you are taking, that it looks as if no man has gone before, there is victory for you. If you'll be a trailblazer, God wants you to be a trailblazer. God wants you to lead. God wants you to go forth in that direction. Psalm 60, verse 11. Give yourself from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Hallelujah. Hello, that person that is depending on somebody else to be your helper this morning. God, is, that man is not your helper. The same man you are depending on is depending on God for help. So why don't you turn to God for your help? God is your help. If you put your trust in man, guess what? It is most likely going to fail. Because no man controls his own destiny. No man. If somebody tells you, oh, come tomorrow, I will help you tomorrow. And by the time you get there, tomorrow is dead. What happens? It's gone. Only God is your help. And that's why the Bible says, vain is the help of man. Trust all men. Believe in all men. But listen to me. Ask your help from your father. Let your father move men to help you. Don't be the mover of men to help you. Let God move the men to help you. There is help for you. The sons of the prophet, they were in the bind. They were hungry. And they didn't have help. And out of nowhere, God sent the man from Bashanish out to them. And the man came with 20 loaves of freshly baked bread. And he appeared unto them. 100 men, 20 loaves of bread. And they said, this bread will not be enough. But the man of God said, if God has provided, it will be enough. And he blessed it and he said, distribute. And the Bible said, they ate to their feet. God is your help. I know you're looking as if, Pastor, you don't understand. Right now, if God does not, if, if somebody doesn't show up to help me, nothing can happen. Let me tell you something. Even if everybody shows up, it is only when God helps you that that help comes. Yeah. Everybody may show up with nothing, but God will always show up with something. Yes. So God is your help. Do you understand? Go on your knees and say, God, I need your help. Quit looking for help from man. Whatever that situation is, tell God. Most of the time we grumble. We never ask. We come, we grumble in our head. Uh, if only God would do this. Uh, I'm going through all this. Nobody knows what I'm. Listen to me. Stop all that grumbling and pity party. Go on your knees and say, My Father, I need your help. This is my situation. This is what I need you to do. 
Tell him exactly what you need him to do, and he will show up for you. God is your helper. You understand that, that man? That you're saying, well, if only I can get help to start this business. Listen to me, you don't need help. All you need is God. All you need is God's idea. All you need is God's favor to start that business. Wait on him. He will give you the idea. He, God, may even connect you with the person that matters. But until you trust him and you decide you're actually going to do it, then it may not happen. Hallelujah. One or two man, then I'll close. Psalm 112, verse 5. The Bible says, A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. You know, two things I'm going to say from this scripture. Hello, as a man, listen to me, show favor to everyone that comes around you. Show favor. Show favor. You never know. You never know. You know, there is, a, there is an adage that says that, um, uh, is it, is it to help the people you meet on, on your way up or respect them or whatever? Because on your way down, you're going to meet them again. So the people you meet on your way up, don't look down on them. Don't be spiteful. Respect them. Appreciate them. Because it is on their shoulders that you're standing up. You're standing on to climb up. And when, when you're going to come down also, Guess what? They could either put their shoulder for you to come down and land softly, or just step aside and let you fall flat. So, and that's why I said, a good man, a good man. I know every man, we have, we have a heart that is good. I'm calling upon your good heart this morning. Go out there and check on your neighbors. Don't assume. Some people have not walked in the last three months. You don't know how they survive. But God has blessed you. Your, 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 your company, your establishment allows you to work from home. You know, some have lost their job. You are able to make something. You see your neighbor every day. They don't go anywhere. They're there. Listen to me. Knock on their door one day and say, listen, here's a gift card to a store. Get yourself some. Get, just bless them. You know, surprise them with a grocery gift card. Show favor to somebody. Step out of your comfort zone. Be a man that helps. This is Father's Day. Be the father that you ought to be. Be the father to the people around you. Then the next one says, you know, will guide his affairs with discretion. Hello, be discreet about your affairs. I always say this and I say it again. Very few people love you. A lot of people tolerate you. And more than a lot of people want to see you fall. So, share your affairs with the very few people who love you. Do you understand me? Share your affairs. Talk to your wife. Talk to your family. Share your life with them. And then a couple of your friends who are very close with you know are prayer. And with the rest of the world, shut them off. I won't say more than that. That's what the word of God says. He says, He will guide his affairs with discretion. Be discreet about your life. You know, kids see a lot of things on social media. People living flamboyantly, people living flashly. And at the end of the day, we see that some of these people will go and commit suicide, you know, for no reason that nobody knows. You know, it's because the life they have been living have been fake all along. They've not been real, and sometimes it catches up. That's why if you live your life in discreet with your family, whatever pain you're going through, share it with your family. Share it with people who will understand. But when you have lifted yourself so high, it is difficult to express your emotions anymore. You become, you become high and mighty. I'm talking to some men this morning. It's time to slow down. It's time to step back into the shadows. It's time to build your own from the rear. It's time to focus on your family. It's time to pour your life into your family. It's time to build what is yours. Hallelujah. Psalm 127 verse 5. I love this so much. Happy is the man that had his quiver full of death. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Hallelujah. You know, when you have kids, 
spiritual or physical. When you have children, spiritual or physical. When you see them, your heart gladdens. Do you understand me? Your heart is glad. You, you know, you, you, feel, you feel joy. Every time I see my kids, I'm happy. You know, we get, we're able to get mad at each other. We're able to be authentic with each other. We're able to be real with each other. We're able to get mad at each other. We're able to forgive each other. You know, and things like that. It makes a man happy. If you see other homes and they are happy like that, go and be obvious and be happy like that. You can do that. And then you can be a spiritual father. It is not given unto everyone to have physical children. If you don't have, be a spiritual father to others out there. There are people that God will bring into your life for you to be a father over. Be that father that they look up to. Be that father that is there for them. Be that father that encourages them. Be that father that they listen to his words. Let that boy in your neighborhood, let him, be, let him be your adopted son. Everybody has given up on him. You don't give up on him. Pray for him. Speak to him. And lead him in the right direction. The Lord will bless him in the name of Jesus. Lastly, and I'll close, Proverbs 13, 22. A good man. Come on, that man, tell yourself, I'm a good man. Hallelujah. You know, a good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the just. Hello, Mr. Goodman. What inheritance are you leaving for your children? Ask yourself. After you are gone, what are you leaving? Can I tell you something this morning? If you leave money, they will squander it. If you have not trained them. So the best that you can give your children right now is a good training, a good education, the ability to stand on their own at all times. And when they can stand, then you can leave them, you can leave for them money, knowing fully well that they will, they will spend it well. They will invest it and they will be a blessing to others. The African, there's an African adage, it says that um, a child that is not trained will sell the house that you use your money to build. Do you understand me? So train up your children. The Bible says train up, train up a child the way he should go. And when he is grown, he will not depart. Be there for your children. I'm calling on fathers this morning. Quit traveling. Traveling father. Never at all. You are never in the life of your children. You are always traveling. It's time to slow down. A time is coming when your nest is going to be empty. A time is coming when the children are going to leave home. And you are going to wish, oh, where was I when these children were growing up? It is time for you to slow down and spend time with your children. Be a father that impacts. Be a father that listens. One memory, one memory have you given to your children? What do they remember you for? To some of you, maybe your children will see you as their bank. ATM, the ATM daddy. It is only when we need money. You've never built anything with your children, never done any project with them. You've never sat down to watch a movie with them. You've never gone out to play with them, ride a bicycle with them, do something with your children. Fathers, it is time to be fathers indeed. It is time for us to take over the lives of our children and build them. You know, I, I, I was so grateful to God when all this COVID thing happened and uh, all of us now have to spend 24 hours with our children. We no longer could blame the school for the behaviors of our children. We, had, we now had ourselves to blame. You know, before we said, oh, it was school, the people they mixed with. Now they were mixing with us at 24 hours. And all the words we were saying, all the curses we were pronouncing, we saw them pronouncing. And you are wondering, oh, how come my child is like this? It is because you are like that. Your child is an expressive image of who you are. It is time to build. You know, in everything that happens, there are good things that come out of it. One of the good things that came out of this COVID-19 for my family, we got to spend so much time together. 24 hours of the day, we were on each other's throat at times. But guess what? We had great times also. Are you listening to me this morning? Be a great father out there. It doesn't cost to be a great father. Take a walk with your children. Take a walk with your family. 
sit with your family, talk with your family, play around with your family. That's who a father is, and that's who God is to us. The Bible said in Genesis that when he made man, God will come in the cool of the day and he will take a stroll with man. Can you imagine the almighty God coming every day to work with man? And some of us are just so busy that for months and months, we don't have time for our children. Some of us are traveling evangelists, uh, traveling ministers. Hello, go back home and go back home and spend time with your children. Spend time with your family. Your first ministry in life is your family. When you fail, when your family fails, you fail. No matter how many millions you lead, if you cannot lead your family, you fail. Fathers, I challenge you today. Let's take up our responsibilities as fathers. Let's protect our families. Let's provide for our families as much as lies within us. Let's, be there. Let's listen to our children. Let's talk to our children. Allow them to talk to them. Reason with them. Love your wife. Build a home, not a house. A home is a place that is filled with love. Build a home that your children will always want to come to. Don't build a house they will run away from. I know the Lord will bless us this Father's Day in particular. And my cry, my heart cry, I say it again, is to see fathers that are family men. Is to see fathers that are stepping up in the society to do what is right. How can you tell his son to pull up his pants when his father that he's working with is wearing that pants? Hello? We need to change. There are a lot of images we need to change. And let's begin as fathers. And the Lord will love us. How can you tell your children not to lie? When you're on the phone and you're telling them, oh, uh, hello, is this, is this, uh, can I talk to this person? Oh, he's not at home. And you are the one talking. And your children can see that you're the one lying. And then your child lies to you and you say, well, don't lie. Listen to me. You show them how to lie. Fathers, let's step up. You are the high priest of your home. You don't lead your family to Christ. You don't lead them in prayers. And yet you think you are the right father. The grace is within you, but you've got to do it. Step up. Be the one that starts it. It doesn't have to be long. Start something with your family today. The best memories children are going to remember is not how much you give them, but those precious moments that they spend with you. Those little times that you've got to climb on your shoulders. Those times that you held them in, their, in your hands. You know, one day my, one of my daughters, she has a picture on her phone right now. And you know, it was when she was a little girl and I held her and I held her in my arms like this. And every time I see that picture on, on our own phone, not my phone, on our own phone, I'm happy. Do you understand? That's a memory she treasures. And I'm happy that she treasures that memory. I wasn't giving her anything, I was just holding her. So fathers, build memories with your children. And the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Okay, and that's all I got for you today. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Ancient of days, the great I am that I am. Lord, we thank you because you are ever so faithful. You called us to be fathers, O oh God. You gave us that grace to be fathers. And you equipped us even as fathers. Lord, I pray for all the fathers under the sound of my voice. I call out the fatherhood in them in the name of Jesus. I call out the father's grace that is already in their life. I activate it by the word of God today in the name of Jesus. I declare and I declare every man out there will indeed be a father in the name of Jesus. You'll be a protector. You'll be a provider. You'll be a shield. You'll be a defense. You'll be a listener. You'll be an encourager in the name of Jesus. You'll be a doer. Boy. You'll be a leader in the mighty name of Jesus. That grace is already in you. Therefore, I call it out in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, God. We pray, Lord Almighty, for as many as are struggling right now. Father, we pray your divine visitation in the name of Jesus. Visit your people, O oh God. 
every struggle, Father, we lay them at your altar this afternoon. And we ask, oh God, Father, this is such struggles. As many as are overwhelmed, oh God, Father, lead them even to you, oh God. Because you are the rock that is higher than us, oh God. Therefore, lead everyone that is overwhelmed to you, oh God. And let them receive refreshing for their soul. Lord, glorify your name, oh God. Meet everyone at the point of their need to God today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Likewise, like I do normally before we end, uh, to anyone out there, this is you're just listening to the word of God today. You don't really understand so much about the word, but you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. The grace of Father we can have talked about. You cannot walk in it fully until you are a child of God. A father gives to his children, and that grace is what the Father has given to us. So you want to receive that grace this morning, you want to be a child of God, you want to walk with God, you want to have a relationship with Jesus. Say with me this morning, very simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I realize I've been a sinner. I repent for my sins. Jesus, come into my life. From today, be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And that's all it takes. Your salvation is assured. And I want to welcome you to the household of faith. You know, you need encouragement, you need help. Please send us an email. We will connect you with churches that you can grow with. And at the same time, you can continue to join us online in this season on Wednesdays and on Sundays. 7 p.m. on Wednesdays on any of the platforms that you're on at um, 11 a.m. on Sunday. I will pray God's blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, as we get ready to close, let me also encourage church members out there. Uh, don't forget to give your offering, your offering, your tithes and your offering today. Be a blessing to the work of the Lord. And the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to pray over the land as you are. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, this morning we're going to have a special. This afternoon, as we give while you're giving, uh, we just want you to be blessed with this special number, uh, especially for all the fathers out there. We want you to know that we celebrate you, we appreciate you, and so we have a special, a special number for all the fathers. And the Lord bless you as you sit back and relax in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just going to sing about the love of God. Hallelujah. And how much He loves each and every single one of us. Hallelujah.
We're just going to go into the blessing this morning, hallelujah, this afternoon, hallelujah. And we're just going to declare his blessings upon our lives, hallelujah. So wherever you are, just get up on your feet and just worship him this morning, hallelujah. And receive his blessings into your life, hallelujah.
His presence will be with us in our coming and our going, in the morning and the evening, in our times of weeping and rejoicing. Our God is for us. Hallelujah. And if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? Hallelujah. Every decision this month shall be in my favor. 
In the name of Jesus. Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die. My children shall not die. No member of my family will die. No one associated with us will die. But we will all leave and declare the works of the Lord in this land of the living. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed or fashioned against me, my children, members of my family, everyone associated with me will prosper and every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment we condemn today in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 43 verse 3 For I am the Lord thy God the Holy One of Israel thy Savior I gave Egypt for thy ransom Ethiopia and Sheba for thee Therefore men that I know not they will arise and fight my battle as they receive the commands from God this month in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, 17. Blessed am I. Blessed is my land. When my king is the son of a noble. My children will be named amongst the nobles of the land. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 91 verse 10. There shall no evil. No type of evil. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity, no accident, no sudden death before me, before my children, before members of my family, and neither shall any plague come near any of us in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 6. I am blessed going out. I am, I am blessed coming in. My basket is blessed. My store is blessed. My children are blessed. Everyone associated with me, they are blessed. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 24. Every place where the souls of my feet shall spread, they are mine. This week, every place that I walk to, that I drive to, that I walk upon, I claim victory in the name of Jesus. Everyone I talk to, they will show me favor in the name of Jesus. This week will favor me and mine in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless and we adore you, Jehovah. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us, overtake us, overwhelm us, flabbergast us, permanently keep our mouth again all the day of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Blessed and prosperous week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.